Hello friends, Kishan is here again and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn how to initialize a Spring Batch database. So if you go to the Spring Boot documentation website and uh, uh, if you follow the point number 78.4, then they have given the description how to initialize a Spring Boot, Boot database. So description says if you are using a Spring Batch, then it comes pre-packaged with SQL initialization initialization scripts for most popular data based platforms a spring boot will detect your database type and execute those scripts by default and in this case we'll switch the fail fast setting to false means errors are log logged but do not prevent the application from starting this is because the scripts are known to be reliable and generally do not contain box so errors are ignorable and ignoring them makes the script item potent you can switch of the initializer and initialization uh, explicitly using a spring batch initializer enables equal to true or false right so uh, let's what documentation says basically documentation says uh, when you work with the spring boot then set of or database tables already pre-packaged with the uh, library itself so you don't need to really uh, write those uh, database uh, creation table yourself that already comes with the spring batch only you need to enable this flag true and uh, that uh, and uh, there is some more changes little more changes in the spring boot and table will be created automatically in your schema so let's so let's try to understand how we can initialize database table in, in in spring batch here we are not going to explore a spring batch in detail i uh, will have a complete different set of videos tutorial there we'll learn uh, spring batch in depth but here we are going to see simply how to initialize database schema in when we integrate a spring with a spring with boot a spring with batch right a spring boot batch uh, a spring boot with a spring batch now let's create a, a project here i have installed uh, sts so uh, in my eclipse that's why i'm getting this option a spring starter project and here project name i'm going to specify a spring boot batch database initialization And package name I'm gonna list as it is com dot infotech sorry infotech dot app so group name and package name I'm gonna specify same and keep everything as default and let's click on next and here I'm gonna select batch mysql and jpa this three uh, spring boot starter dependency i'm going to select and let's click on the next and finally click on the finish now eclipse is processing and after certain while uh, project will be created in our eclipse now you can see uh, this project is created and maven is downloaded all dependency from the central repository now if you go to the maven dependencies directory then here you can see a spring boot starter batch dependency is added and if you scroll down then you have a jar is called a spring batch core and if you expand a spring batch core and you have a package is called r spring framework dot batch dot core if you expand this uh, uh, package then and come down then you can have a set of sql script right db script for different databases uh, you have a db script for oracle mysql hs HS, uh, hsql etc right so here we are going to work with the mysql so you can see a schema mysql dot sql right so here this contains the all required table to work with the spring batch so all ddl query is there and you have a one more db script for mysql and that is nothing but uh, here you can see a schema drop mysql table so this basically holds the all uh, and basically this uh, holds the uh, uh, 
SQL query to drop the tables, right? Which you are creating from using this uh, DB script, right? So uh, basically, we don't want to write uh, uh, explicitly manually this uh, DDL query, right? So directly you can instruct the Spring Boot to pick up, I mean, DB script from this these two files and run. So how to do that in a Spring Boot? A Spring Boot. So here, first of all, go to the your bootstrap class, which is here, and enable uh, Spring Boot batch processing. So I would say add enable uh, batch batch processing. So in th this way, we have enabled a Spring batch processing. Now, now here, if you go to the your properties file then here we require some property to be uh, entered so those property i'm going to copy from our previous example and those properties uh, are very simple you can understand easily so those properties are related to our database so this much property i'm gonna copy now let's copy this property here so basically here three entry of three properties mandatory rest of uh, uh, and it, um, this four property is mandatory and rest of the property you can leave now here uh, i want i mean uh, as we are using a spring boot batch so these tables are required to create in our database because uh, spring batch uh, processes uh, i mean information in the batch and that makes entry uh, ma makes information in this table so that's that's what we require these tables to be created in our database right so if you go to the uh, spring batch core and here uh, if you come down then you have a properties file right for every database so in this case we are using mysql so go to the batch mysql.properties and here you can see this is also you don't need to write manually so batch schema script and batch drop script location they have given which is present in our class path so let's copy so first of all i would want to create we want to uh, do some cleanup operation so here uh, you have a ta uh, some properties is called a spring batch spring back initializer enable will have to write true so that this will basically the, you are allowing to run some script and second tag you'll have to add spring dot batch dot schema here i'm going to specify this location and uh, basically this script basically drops the existing table and comma you'll have to write the comma and second uh, db skip location i would like to mention schema mysql dot sql which holds the ddl query basically now after specifying these two properties let's run this application and uh, make sure you have a here database we have mentioned a spring boot db so let's make a separate table for a spring boot batch so i would say a spring batch db so if you go to the my database we have already table is called okay there is no table so let's create this there is no database sorry not table database we need to create this database so let's click this database and apply apply finish so if you refresh then you can see a spring batch db and currently there is no table right so now if i run this application we have created and in this application we have enabled batch processing and if i run so we are getting some exception class path file not found exception right does not exist something like that so let's see what went wrong so Class path. Okay, leave this first. I'll remove this first slash 
and let's try it out again. So here basically we are trying to specify two different uh, two different class path with uh, semicolon that is not taking. So what you can do, so this dropping these tables, you can do them manually, right? So as an application owner, you can decide how you are going to drop this table. So I would recommend drop that table manually, but for creation, you can take help of this. Uh, you can take the help of this property like a spring batch a schema. And after specifying this uh, schema location, let's run this project and see tables are creating created or not. Now there is no error. If you go to the database and if you refresh, then you can see setup tables are created, which is required uh, to work with the Spring batch, right? So here in this video, we have learned how to create or uh, how to initialize a uh, database database in a Spring batch, right? And here, once you create the table, then what you can do, you can make this flag as false. So this will not try to create database table again. So that's the significance of this flag, right? So every time if you drop the table, if you recreate the table, then previous if you'd have some previous data in this table that you are going to lose, right? So here I have shown you one of the way to initialize these databases. So you might have some other uh, way to also do the same. So that depends on you as an application owner uh, which approach, approach you are going to follow. So in this video, so we have learned how to initialize the uh, Spring, uh, Spring Boot database so in next video if you go to the spring board uh, uh, spring board documentation then next point uh, in next point we are going to learn uh, how to integrate a spring board with some migration tool database migration tools like uh, flyway and liquibase so thanks for watching this video and this code i am going to put on the github and GitHub location will get in the video description itself thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial.